thank you for coming here instead of going to the, uh, the gaming session. I realize that um, for some of you this will be more exciting. Yes. And um, <laughs> for many of you it won't be more exciting. Um, I, I typically tend to wander when I talk, but I um, appear to have corroded batteries and destroyed my, my remote control. So I'll have to be stationary, which will bug me. And I'm feeling like fail based on last night. So let's see how this goes. Um, how many people realized that Form Nardily Q Ladies was the women in open source talk? Okay, not everyone put up their hands. This is going to be good. <laughs> okay, so um, we'll go through the, um, the, the basics here. I'm Canadian, so I say sorry a lot. And A, when I do this talk in the States, I also say a boot because they think that's sort of clever. Um, yeah. I, I've, I've known about the internet for a while, um, back in the days of, and, and this is actually the cool part, because um, all of the, the talkers, because I downgraded from MUDs, were UK based, so I went from Mars, where I was nuked, to um, snow planes. I don't know if there's any, either Mars or, yay! <laughs> Sorry. Okay, that doesn't work in the States, and obviously it does work in here, so. Any, I've known about the internet for a while. I've known about uh, alternatives to Windows for a while. After having done the OS X training with Apple um, and uh, saw that they were using, instead of user, it was a capital U for user and they'd added an E to it, thought, eh, I'm not really sure that this OS X thing is for me, but I've gone through a variety of different Linux distros since then, mostly Debian-based. I'm a member of a lot of different projects um, many of them have to do with gender. My problem with the naming of many of these groups uh, is coming at a later slide. Um, <laughs> so I'm also part of the, uh, the Drupal, um, which is a Drupal community, I guess we could say. It's um, a web-based content management system, and my this is actually the first time I've said this in public, so it's kind of exciting for me. Based on the Lug Radio Live conference in the US, I am now um, working with Addison Wesley on a new Drupal book. So I'm now a signed author based on Lug Radio Live. Well, hey! <laughs> um, so a uh, fairly low user number as well within that community. I've been there for five or six years at least. I also run a technology conference in rural Canada, which um, I'm assuming that Hick translates across the ocean. Yes. <laughs> okay, so a bit of a play on words. Uh, HIC is also how the internet connects knowledge, which was the way that we got around to people getting all huffy about it. Um, we'll talk more about uh, HIC tech later on in the presentation. Ultimately, though, I am fairly average in terms of my code contributions to the community, i.e. basically none. Um, but I am very enthusiastic normally, uh, unlike today where I am trying very hard to have enthusiasm. But probably the most distinctive thing about me is that I am not a man. So we'll come, come back to this list again, and you'll see that, um, well, there's a lot of chicks and girls and women and chicks and chicks and all that kind of stuff, and really, I don't understand what it is about that right-hand column that as a community, whether, and I don't mean necessarily just the women, but, but why is it that we're using gender to identify parts of the community? What, it is, what is it about chicks and girls and women and chicks and all that kind of stuff that, that makes that divide work? I mean, is it, is it the fact that it's feminist? Because there's definitely men who are part of, openly men, who are part of the um, the women, Ubuntu women and the Debian women project and that kind of thing. So is it the breasts? Well, men can have breasts as well. Um, you know, is it the ovaries? I mean, it could be the vaginas because ultimately all of this stuff, it's not relevant <laughs> at all, completely. And furthermore, in a text-based world, it's even less, you can <sighs> just stop. There's a whole bunch of things here that we need to look at first. So we need to look at the fact that this is a difficult topic. Um, one of the things that drives me up the wall a little bit is the fact that we seem to want to claim within the open source world that bad behavior is something specific to open source software. And it's absolutely not specific. We've got the white ribbon campaign for domestic violence. We've got 
um, you know, the glass ceiling, whether it's real or not, it exists in society. So the fact that we're drawing attention to it within open source, it's not really an open source problem. It's, it's a much bigger problem than that. It's also not the dominant behavior. I've had far more problems in the Windows world than I have in the open source world. And maybe, maybe I'm drawing, um, I, I'm more willing to be um, accepting of my basement dwelling friends. <laughs> but ultimately, it isn't the norm. And yet we're sort of, you know, when you get up and you do the women in open source talk, it's expected that you'll talk about the fact that, um, you know, there's been death threats and there's been um, misogynistic behavior and all of this negative stuff. But it's not the norm. Um, it's also online a question of it's, it's more than your bits, isn't it? Because you can identify it's just about anything you want online. Anything you want online. <laughs> um, and is, does Dame Edna end up being more or less of a woman because she's able to wear heels that I could never stretch my feet into? Um, we have to start thinking about more than all of the things that we have been thinking about. And I, part of what I hope this presentation can do is that it will give permission to the entire group to have this conversation. Because ultimately, what happens right now is that um, women seem to be the only ones who are allowed to talk about the gender problem. Uh, men get essentially completely squashed down whenever they try and bring up some of these same issues. So I'm hoping that this presentation allows us to open up the dialogue a little bit more. I've read a whole bunch of stuff. Um, the, the Women Don't Ask book and Unlocking the Clubhouse are probably two of the more um, well-known books. Uh, the Sexual Paradox is a brand new book that's just come out. And um, one of the really interesting things in that one is that um, Susan Pinker says, in a sort of an advanced modern society, you end up having fewer women in engineering because they can they have more choice. They can choose the job that they want. Whereas in developing nations, um, so less money, that kind of thing, you actually see more women in software because it's one of the very few jobs that will actually pay a reasonable wage. The interesting thing is she doesn't actually reference unlocking the clubhouse. So the the um, the unlocking the clubhouse is the one that talks about the fact that there's you know there's there's horrible inequities and women aren't treated fairly and women don't treat themselves fairly and all the rest of it. So to compare some of the stuff that's out right now, there is actually some interesting research. So I've done more than a bit of reading called procrastination. Really, I've tested social boundaries. I've pissed people off within the Ubuntu community. Um, there was an incident with um, a stupid girl, which I took issue to her name and it um, got unpleasant from there. Uh, I've asked a whole bunch of questions within different communities. Probably the most terrifying of communities is a room full of 300 teenage girls. You don't realize how uncool you are until you've got that going on times multiple hundreds of girls. So, I, and it, it's, it is, um, they're coming for me. They've discovered I'm here. <laughs> We do need to change the conversation, though. So we need to look past the, the lack of women, and we need to make it about something far more important than that. We need to talk about world domination of free and open source software, because really that's what this needs to be about, right? So end of the series. Now we can actually start the presentation. There's going to be four parts, uh, where we are now, new way of thinking. Uh, the case study is basically talking about Hick Tech and then some very easy steps to change. So where we are now, whoops. You've probably seen these kinds of numbers. This is from the Floss Polls data. So we've got proprietary developers with a nice happy Pac-Man. The Foss developers, basically no women. And uh, the actual numbers, 72% of proprietary developers are male, whereas it's 98.5% within the open source community. Again, we normally focus on the bad behavior. Um, when I delivered this presentation in uh, San Francisco, 
Val Henson, the author of this document, was in the audience. And um, probably one of the more nerve-wracking things that I've ever done, because I'm not really a huge fan of the document. It's, um, it's very rule-oriented, so it's great if you've got um, a need for rules, you know, perfect for my inner Aspie. And it, the document was actually written for one of her Asperger friends, or so the, the claim goes. Um, so here we go, blah, 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 here's all your don'ts. Doesn't really matter. Blah, 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 here's all your do's. Have you got them all memorized? Fantastic, because the summary really is, don't be a dick. Mm-hmm. Now, the problem with the document is that if you don't correctly match up the do's and the don'ts, you're actually screwed no matter what you do. Because on the one hand, it's there's sort of a don't talk to women because you'll make them feel as though they're getting special attention because they've got vaginas. And on the other hand, there's the if you don't talk to women. So no matter what you do, you're basically, you're going to be doing something wrong. Now, and the document is basically, it's the if bad behavior happens, send boy to this document. So, and we haven't generated any new language yet. Um, Excuse me. So problem is really humans are social. We are interacting, for the most part, in a text-based world, but ultimately, you know, there may be some kind of inappropriate behavior happening from time to time. And we need to start moving on from the bad behavior. Um, I do understand about awkwardness, ultimately. The age of eight, I thought I was pretty damn cool. The great part is, the class made me take off the tie and then let me put it back on for my individual shot. In case you're wondering why I've put this one up here, awkward behavior, this is the bad part about this slide, okay? So I understand from awkward, it's okay. But ultimately, humping legs, not so good. And in fact, God gave men brains larger than dogs so they wouldn't hump women's legs at cocktail parties. For those of you who knew the quote, here's a little bit more, one of my favorite sort of scenes in the movie, of course. Everyone here knows hackers, right? How come I'm not getting like, yeah, have it on four different forms of media, have it all memorized, come on, guys. So um, ultimately, and there's more to just popular media and socially awkward interactions. Um, (laughs) Yeah. But it also, I mean, it goes farther than that, right? We've got the gong on stage, and so there we go. Um, Now, the great thing about Love Radio Live is that it does sort of turn the tables a bit. It's not very often that we get the man, the man, (laughs) in the pants with tape, (laughs) Um, with the woman actually being the serious presenter. So it's one of the nice flips about this conference, but ultimately... Is Kate being sexist with her comments from her mom? Is she, uh, you know, is is she allowed to say those kinds of things? Does Randall really use Wikipedia? And I don't know. It's not very often I get to look at naked men at conferences. That was just kind of fun. So all of these things are kind of weird interactions, and it's okay to have weird interactions. Ultimately, we do need to be able to have a good chuckle when something inappropriate happens and move on with it instead of getting stuck on that one inappropriate thing. So, again, we need to see the future, world domination of free and open source software, and we need to start with a new way of thinking. Ubuntu bug number one. Microsoft has a majority market share. Market share means end users. End users are a lot of this. Yawn, boring, not so much fun, but... Ultimately, if we can increase our user base, we'll also be able to increase the number of available developers. So we need to get people to switch brands. And um, this little bit absolutely dives into the stereotypes. On the one hand, on the other hand, it is marketing data. So if you want to believe numbers, you want to believe marketers, and you want to believe stereotypes, this is the part where we can actually look at sort of the, the untapped market or what, what we haven't managed to do yet. So here we go. Two-thirds of women are likely to switch brands based on a good cause. Women make more than 80% of buying decisions in all homes. American data, but I'm guessing that that's fairly standard across the, across the world, actually. 
Um, women research extensively and are less likely to be influenced by ads, which may look a little bit familiar. A uh, little bit of research going on here. So we've got the bad, we've got the um, good, and then the very, very bad. Um, with ultimately the conclusion being, that, that's not your main problem at all. <laughs> so women are likely to actually do some thinking around things. They're going to influence the decisions that are happening in the home. And um, now there's a couple of things that aren't so great in here. Women place more importance on brand characteristics and personal assistance from store personnel than men do. Well, a little bit of reality check here. It's free and it's self-serve. Yay! Not so yay. <laughs> um, so we need to start thinking about this in a different way. We need to start going from the red hats to the red hat societies. Now, does the red hat society exist here? Yes. Excellent. The is no, no. It, the is no, no. So, it, and, but you, do you actually get this kind of activity happening? Is it? That's true, all right. So have people experienced the Red Hat Society? Okay, so the Red Hat Society basically, whether you know the poem or not, my experience with it in, in Owen Sound, rural community of 20,000 people, is that women who've, not that it's necessarily the case, but whose, whose men have died off, they tend to be older women, get dressed up in red hats and purple frocks, and um, go out and do things. They're active within the community. They're going, to, they're going to social events. They're going to the theater. They're doing things. And they're doing it in a visible and exciting way. So we need to move from the basement dweller with the red hat to the red hat society. And this is where things start to get, in my mind, this is where things start to get really exciting. So we've got the game plan here. We need to identify the strengths, determine real needs, and ultimately focus the efforts. So wherever possible, actually have that, um, that conscious ability to say, oh, you think this sucks. Well, hang on a second. I happen to have an alternative here in my back pocket. So we're going to go through three different strengths here. It's free. Charities tend to employ a lot of women. So instead of... Um, I'm not big on going after getting schools to convert because then you're dealing with the school board. If you can work with charities, ultimately having a female-friendly message is going to help because, for the most part, um, charities are run by and uh, employ women. So in each of these, we've got the, uh, the little Ubuntu CDs somewhere. Spot the Ubuntu CDs, right? So charity employ charities tend to employ a lot of women. Show local charity how they can spend less money. The obvious or the, the easiest solution on this one is to actually start them off with uh, open office as an alternative to the Microsoft suite. Um, I'm still amazed at how many people are paying for the Microsoft, you know, the, the office suite of tools. So that's your first one. Free and open source software provides freedom. Seniors can get trapped into routines. You need to help them to escape. Great thing about senior citizens, so we had the, the women working in charities. Great thing about senior citizens, they tend to cluster in homes. So it's very easy to get to them all at the same time. Now, the quality of experience may vary. Um, however, uh, again, using my own community as, community as an example, some of these facilities are essentially stepped communities. So you start out at one end with basically um, an apartment within the building and then at the most secure, for lack of a better word, end of the spectrum, oh, the thugs have been deployed. <laughs> at, the, at the furthest end of the spectrum, you've got sort of actual physical lockdown where they're stuck in their rooms and can't get out. Um, but the great thing about senior citizens is they engage with their grandkids and they can actually use computers with their grandkids in a way that a parent could never get. Um, they couldn't put their ego aside for long enough to be able to actually do that teaching, especially if they're not technical. So skip that middle generation. Start with the grandparents. They've got the time to work with the grandkids. So now you're affecting 
um, a larger group of people, and eventually, I mean, the parents kind of get suckered into doing whatever, whatever is happening in terms of the software that's on their computer, but for the, for the non-technical parents, just skip them completely and go on either side of that generation. Um, free and open source software is also a little bit alternative. So um, head to where there's alternative communities. Leave some CDs. Why not? <laughs> this is actually in Toronto. Um, I don't need to explain what those are, I hope. We'll just move on. Advocacy, however, is not an overnight solution. But like a one-night stand, the effects of one presentation can last a lifetime. Whew. I apparently got excited and threw some spaces in. So in real life, women tend to socialize a lot more, said Peter Cooper, and therefore we don't need to have that social outlet at conferences, and that's why there's not very many women at conferences. Let's think about this for a second. Women tend to socialize a little bit more, therefore, absolutely, they're going to be showing up at workshops and conferences and those kinds of things. In fact, it's in our very nature. So we've got not only the quilting. Now, you may not be a quilting kind of person, but I bet you're scrapbooking. So, and men are like, hey, scrapbooking was that. That's the thing that costs the women I guess there's men that do it, but not very many. Thousands of dollars a year? Yeah. <laughs> um, and there's actually software that goes along with the scrapbooking community. Uh, so we do tend to be social. Um, we figured out how to do it within, within the crafts community. And this is where... Um, <laughs> it's one of the bizarre things about the software world is that on the software side of things, we've got mostly men with a few women who are creating new, old, new realities, basically. And then on the craft side of things, you've got mostly women with a few men who are also creating new realities. And they're both very creative processes. But you don't tend to see a lot of crossover between them. So we've got one crocheter, and we've got... But you didn't bring your crochet. <laughs> so, but it's there's a lot of social activity that's happening and why is it that we don't have the crossover between these two very creative communities I'm not entirely sure but anyways so we tend to pay to attend social gatherings that's the other thing and um, we, likely, we like it to be vaguely interesting um, you know, we'll make exceptions but so charging a fee forces a commitment to participation. And I know that this is one of the things... Um, my guess is that if Lug Radio Live in San Francisco had been, oh, add a couple of zeros onto the price, would have been better attended. It was very well attended, but it would have been overrun if it had been more expensive because there's this perception of value that goes in with charging a higher fee. So if you're going to run an event, definitely charge a fee. It? Yep. So, at this point, we start talking about hick tech. Now, um, I'm not sure what farming is like here, but uh, in Owen Sound, I've already gone through that, this is what farming looks like. In case you're not entirely sure what this is, this is the uh, Canadian National Pumpkin Chucken Contest, which happens about a uh, 20-minute drive from my place. Um, the guys in the back there on the, the four-wheelers go out to measure how far the pumpkin has been launched. Is there pumpkin chucking here? No. Oh, you... Cows. All right, you all need to come over. Cows. Because pumpkin chucking is a lot of fun. This is a fail. <laughs> now, I do want to explain why. This is, this is actually, this is quite funny. This is the American, um, it has a name. It's the jack-o'-lantern, that's what it is. And he comes up to the Canadian competition every year because this is bigger and better and air-powered. <laughs> so, unfortunately, though, this one happens to be a bit of a fail because the pumpkin sort of dissolved um, mid-air. And this is remarkably difficult to photograph, as of, by the way. Um, yeah, yes. <laughs> so that's a fail. However, a successful shot, this, that was this year's record, was over 2,000 feet. 
So we do take our rural technology very seriously, and the Americans even more so. Um, there, there, there's, yeah, those are the Canadian ones. Yeah, kind of wonder about our military, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so, there we go, bit of fail, bit of pumpkin chucking. Back to the HECTEC conference. The, the turbine and the um, Charlet, the turbine's actually a, a Vesta, and the um, steer, it's not a cow. Um, you have to learn all kinds of crazy things when you run a rural technology conference. They're about an hour and change drive from where I live. So it's a, the conference is ideas focused, end user. I realized pretty quickly that um, the techies all thought that they knew everything. They didn't really need to show up. Um, so I turned my attention more towards women and empowering women to use technology. <clears throat> and it worked. I had more female registrants than I had male registrants for a technology conference. Um, this year, topics ranged from uh, search engine optimization and uh, Neohapsis Labs came up and did a, a security presentation. The community manager of Flickr came. Um, the community, ex mm, what's her official title? Blah, 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 someone from The Guardian. Meg Picard came up from the came across from the Guardian. Um, so this this was a technical conference, and we had more women than we had men. Some even brought their husbands, and they did. I mean, the great thing was I actually had women who were registering, and their plus one was their husband, um, which is basically completely unheard of as far as I know. So this is my my first year. This is what my speaking lineup looked like. I did try. It, was a, it wasn't anything that was publicly available, but I did, um, I did make an effort to get a balanced number of uh, male and female presenters. In my second year, um, uh, slightly skewed, there were more male presenters, but still not bad. Um, the interesting thing for me is that uh, food and egg and technology are male-dominated. Um, Although, maybe if I tried a little bit harder, I could have had more female presenters. But for some of them, they were... Um, where's Sean? There's Sean. Sean McGivern runs um, the local flour mill. And really, if you want to get some topics, there really is only the business owner to run that, or to, do, to deliver that topic for you. Um, but in other cases, I'm just looking at what else is there. Um, yeah, and then you know, sort of crypto 101, sort of and hacker at the bottom there. Um, but you can you can actually make an effort to balance things out if you give yourself enough time. <clears throat> they also registered early, which was fantastic for me because it meant I could actually pay to produce promotional materials that were then used for the rest of the the rest of the uh, sort of lead up to the conference. So we've looked at, at this point, some of the information that's available. I don't wear a watch. I have no, I've no idea how long I've rambled on for. It could be you know, 10 minutes into a 45-minute presentation at this point. Um, we've looked at, basically, some of the, the social problems and the awkwardness, the fact that we need to move beyond it. We've looked at, um, if we're willing to buy into the stereotypes and the marketing data, uh, what can or why is there a potential market there, and that's because basically if you believe the stereotypes and if you believe the marketers, um, women are, are more likely to switch over to Ubuntu than, um, than a man. And um, we looked at a couple of examples. So alternative communities, charities, and seniors were three sample communities. Oh, bless. And now we've got a raccoon. So, <laughs> um, so we, we looked at, um, and then finally we looked at the, the conference and how that really works in real time and how when you do start marketing to women, uh, you do actually increase participation. Oh, the other thing I didn't mention about the conference is um, at the end of the day I went through um, the loot bag and um, at the bottom of the loot bag, of course, was an Ubuntu CD. And it was actually really interesting because... They, the uh, delegates spent the day learning about and getting comfortable with technology. And then so, you know, I was walking them through some of the things that were in the bag. And we got to the point where I said, and the CD, 
And so, you know, how many people here are unhappy with Windows? And it was a good number of people that put their hands up. And in fact, my AV technician actually started vocalizing his irritation with Vista. It was really great. So I, I said, okay, well, when you get home, throw this CD, you know, now that you're feeling all excited and, and empowered, throw this CD into your computer at home and, you know, it won't change anything, but just take a look at what your alternatives are. And so I got that it was like the entire day was, you know, the lead up to sending them home with an alternative that they could actually implement right away. I'm not sure that any of them did, but now at least they know that there's alternatives. So that was, that was really exciting for me to be able to take that opportunity to conference to do that. So now we've got the five tangible steps to change. First thing to do is to live in the future. Be a real person. Behave as if you're already surrounded by women. And I know that, um, uh, well, it's possible in the IRC channel that things get, um, well, there may have been goats involved once. <laughs> All right, twice. <laughs> um, but I realize when I show up in that channel, exactly what I'm getting into. And you have to know your community well enough to say, this is a community that I want to participate in, and this is how I need to participate in this community. I, I may have been inappropriate once. Or, well, twice. <laughs> but, but basically, be aware of your actions and understand that there are times you will step over the line. Okay, there's times that I've stepped over the line, so you might not, but I tend to test where the lines are. And be prepared to, to rein yourself in. Work on the main teams of projects. Don't isolate yourself into um, the, the Dash women group or the Dash chicks group, which in many cases ends up being a social project that doesn't actually do anything. And that's one of my big frustrations as well with the, the women projects is that I understand that they're really important from a social point of view and from um, the, the getting together and feeling that you're not alone. I completely understand that. But I would also really like those groups to be active advocates, to actually have projects that they're putting forward, things that they're accomplishing, something more than just a bunch of vaginas hanging in an IRC channel. So we need to get to that point. I think we need to get to that point. You need to do one thing different. Um, I quite like this quote because it, it makes me realize that it's sort of... 20 years ago, we weren't necessarily thinking about um, every single piece of trash that we generated and which bin it went into. And if we start being aware from a software point of view that every time we have an interaction that has to do with software with other people, if we start introducing small ideas each time, then we can affect change much faster. The problem is, this is a lot of work to be thinking all the time. So start with one thing. Open one window for one person. Get one person switched off of Internet Explorer. Get one other person off of the Microsoft Office suite. One thing at a time. And if you're constantly doing one thing, that's going to add up really, really quickly. Ask for help. Ask women to be role models. Uh, Geekspeaker.com is a fantastic resource. It's basically the bios of they're probably into the hundreds now of women who can give technical presentations at conferences. <clears throat> Ask men to help as well. So there are fewer female presenters at this conference as a um, percentage basis than there were in San Francisco. And I'm getting the, yeah. And I'm also probably getting the, the internal monologue that's saying, I'm not inviting a fucking vagina just because she's a vagina to speak at my conference. But you do, they're, they're, you have to decide what it is that your audience wants. But then you also, I think, if you're going to run a conference, if you're going to set up an experience, you need to be responsible for challenging your audience and basically asking them to not just show up and drink beer, which is a lot of fun. Um, all kinds of fail in my head today because of last night's drinking. Um, but you have to actually, you have to be better than the people that are showing up at your conference. You're, you're responsible for that experience. And so wherever you can provide, um, I don't mean
mean a more balanced view in the sense of anything other than please can we have someone other than a white man delivering a presentation oh every once in a while and it's it's much easier and even if you look at my um, my hip tech this year the, the technology stream there's one woman in it it's much much easier to ask men to present so yeah work a little bit harder and ask for help though I mean if you if you don't know who within the community can give presentations that isn't sort of the the standard white guy ask the community to come up with names for you empower people to make foolish mistakes um, it eliminates fear and the example that I give on this one is um, it's not that it's less relevant here but in North America we tend to drive automatic cars and when I switched from Grendel to Beowulf um, I went from an automatic to a standard car and I, I, um, I didn't realize they'd left the parking brake on um, so as I was very carefully trying to get out of the garage without smacking both of my mirrors off I you know, started the car very carefully it's all good and <coughs> fail to move forward on three separate occasions <laughs> and so the fantastic thing about this experience for me though was other than the fact that they all laughed at me and I was laughing at myself because it was just tragic, tragic fail um, they opened the, the door and they released the handbrake which is a very simple thing to do but here's the difference if that had been in front of a computer I would have been shuffled aside I was not shuffled out of my driver's seat they helped me with the problem by releasing the handbrake, all in good fun. And ultimately, it wasn't, there was nothing negative about the experience. But I sure know that sensation now of car not moving forward, handbrake must be on. Um, and I'm not, I am the only collision free driver in my family, but there's nothing embarrassing about making mistakes from time to time. And if we use this as an example, when someone is making a mistake in front of a computer, it's really difficult to not grab the keyboard and just fix it for them. But more and more, we, let, we need to let people, and women specifically, uh, we need to actually allow people to make their own mistakes and recover from them. We also need to clearly transfer authority. Women are used to consuming technology. We're not used to being in the driver's seat. Um, we need to encourage women to question the software that was given to them. Um, when, I mean, whenever I sit down with anyone in front of a computer, and they just say, "Well, I don't like the way this works, but oh, it's it's just the way it is." Well, did you know that you could customize that toolbar to actually have the buttons that you do need and remove the buttons that you never use? Oh, I didn't actually know that. So, question the software that's given to them. Um, ask women how they would improve the software, and teach women to change reality. So there's your five basic steps. You need to live in the future, do one thing different, ask for help, empower people, and clearly transfer authority. I, I don't actually know what the football trophies would look like. This is the Stanley Cup. This is the mecca of hockey as far as um, trophies go. So you need to keep your eye on the prize. Remember that this is all about the world domination of free and open source software. And we need to remember that women being 50% of the world, are 50% of the solution. And that's it. Thank you very much.